There is a universal principle of design in nature. It's a principle to which all living organisms conform. It's a process by which all life emerges and continues to improve. This medium is called bottom-up processing. Bottom-up processing is a design technique that started out simple and builds into complexity through small and dependable incremental steps, as opposed to a top-down process of design which dictates progress gratuitously from above on the basis of authority. Bottom-up processing relies upon and acknowledges the value of the culmination of the unique personal experiences of many self-determining entities. Self-determining entities are naturally in the best position to know what's good or bad for themselves, and therefore, in aggregate, know what kind of progress is best in building an organism, society, etc. Versus the audacious, presumptuous arrogance of one or a few elitists who dictate whimsically from on high. A few examples of top-down design are as follows. Tyranny, totalitarianism in the case of ordering societies, gods and other deities in the case of ordering living beings. Now a few examples of bottom-up design. Liberal democracy in the case of social organization, evolution via natural selection in the case of ordering the structure of living beings. Now that you have a basic grasp of the meaning of these concepts, I will get to my main thesis. Even when one agrees that life is best ordered by bottom-up processing, in reference to, say, democracy versus authoritarianism, the person in question often fails to apply this principle where it matters most, in economics. Many who recognize the efficiency of the democratic process over despotic rule, and many who know that all life on Earth emerged through the bottom-up process of evolution versus believing that a god or gods created life are the same people who, ironically, renege on this foundational bottom-up principle when thinking about economics. The people, I'll call utopianists, who neglect to acknowledge the paucity, prudence, and practicality of bottom-up economics tend to favor top-down policies like the redistribution of wealth to the poor or to the rich, free, quote-unquote, free education, rent control, public housing programs, $15 minimum wages, etc. Those who favor bottom-up economic policies, on the other hand, abhor the arrogance, audacity, and bold presumptuousness of trying to engineer society intellectually, no matter how beneficial the outcome is professed to be. Bottom-up economics aspires to the same prosperous outcome as those who favor top-down policies, but it doesn't trust the intellect of the elite class who try to pull the strings of the benighted working man or woman. Also, bottom-up economics is practical in heeding the constraints of reality that the utopianists think they can overcome. Bottom-up economics, like democracy, takes its orders from the bottom, from the individual, from the workers. These orders, or votes, show up in the form of prices in the marketplace. Aggregates of small purchases act as signals to guide customers to make the most prudent choices. Choices which will get life-depending resources to the greatest number of people in the shortest amount of time for the cheapest cost. It's a superintelligence which transcends the intellects of the greatest geniuses on the planet. But this signaling system can be distorted by too much political intervention by utopianist politicians into this network of otherwise free exchanges. When too many distortions occur, wrong signals are sent, causing maldistribution and economic collapses. Under the aegis of the professed social good, or economic equality, utopianists, top-down advocates, unintentionally deceive us to believe that it is them who are the patron saints of the working class, that it is them who are the purveyors of the good. Sure, in oratory, a despot could announce his or her love for the people, his or her devotion to the good, and yet, in practice, have the very opposite effect. It isn't just the likes of the overtly callous Donald Trump and others like him who are dangerous. 
It is with the good intentions, honest demeanor, and the overall good nature of do-gooder politicians with top-down economic policies like Barack Obama did or Bernie Sanders would have, who are the most dangerous to the well-being of society. When things look too good to be true, they probably are. Be extra weary of politicians who claim they can bestow upon us everything we want without yielding to the practical limitations of reality. Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing to Abstract Thought for much more to come.